Father Field Professor Ugal Sahin, co-founder of BioNTech, says the impact of the new COVID-19 vaccine will kick in significantly over summer and life should be back to normal by next winter. Last week, BioNTech and co-developers Pfizer said preliminary analysis showed their vaccine could prevent more than 90% of people from getting COVID-19 with about 43,000 people taking part in the test. The United Kingdom is expected to get 10 million doses by the end of the year with a further 30 million doses already ordered. The vaccine is given in two doses three weeks apart. The vaccine has given a boost of confidence that an end to the pandemic is close with the leading scientists behind it saying they are hopeful life could return to normal by next winter. But there are some big uncertainties. The vaccine needs approval from regulators and they will only grant that if they are happy that the job is safe and works well. Early results look very good, but scientists say they await the full ones in the coming weeks. There is also no data yet to show how well the job works and those who need it the most are the elderly. Nor do we know if it stops people from spreading the disease as well as getting sick. And it's also not clear how long the immunity might last. In Ethiopia, the president of Tigri region says his forces fired rockets at Eritrea's airport last night. He has accused the Ethiopian national forces of using the airport to launch attacks on Tigre. Ethiopia's federal government has not yet commented on the accusation. But the attack is seen as a major escalation in the 12-day conflict between the Ethiopian government and the governing party in Tigray. Fighting over Tigray has also affected Sudan, with at least 17,000 civilians crossing the border from Ethiopia, according to the United Nations. Meanwhile, voters in Moldova are going to the polls Sunday for a second time this month to cast their ballot for president. The runoff election comes after challenger Maya Sandu failed to win a majority of votes one seat current leader Igo Dodon two weeks ago. Sandu, a former World Bank economist, has closer ties with Europe. President Igo, meanwhile, is openly backed by Russia. Voting is ongoing in more than 2,000 polling stations, including for Moldovans living abroad, according to the Central Election Commission. Moldova is one of Europe's poorest nations and has suffered a sharp economic downturn during the coronavirus pandemic. Elsewhere, 15 countries have formed the world's largest trading bloc, covering nearly a third of the global economy. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership is made up of 10 Southeast Asian countries, as well as South Korea, China, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. The pact is seen as an extension of China's influence in the region. The deal was to involve 12 countries and was supported by Trump's predecessor Barack Obama as a way to counter China's surging power in the region. The deal has finally been signed Sunday on the sidelines of a virtual summit hosted by Vietnam. Finally, legendary Indian actor Sumitra Chatterjee, famed for his work with Oscar-winning director Ray, has died from coronavirus complications. The 85-year-old actor was admitted to hospital in Kolkata City on 6 October after he tested positive for the virus. He has been in the acting industry for six decades and featured in Bengali language films. Chatterjee, who starred in more than 300 movies, was also an accomplished playwright, theater actor, and a poet. Ruth Wamboy, reporting for Channel One Weekend.